Hello and welcome to a new video discussing dynamic array functions, video number 8. No need to remind you that dynamic array functions are working only with Office 365. If you are using any other version of Excel, you won't be able to practice the exercise in this video. In this video, we'll continue with filter function. We are going to see how to extract the top n value from a table using filter function. Then we are going to create a dynamic range based on the output of the spilled array. And then we are going to draw a dynamic chart using this dynamic range and also create a dynamic title for the chart. While working on the example, we are going to discuss some other functions beside filters such as large, index, and sort. Let's go directly to Excel. On the left hand side, I have a table containing 25 products and its sales value. If I want to extract the top three products by sales value, I can just write three here and hit enter. You will see the list automatically generated and sorted descending and also the chart drawn automatically. And if you look at the title, it reflects the correct count of the products in this list. If I change this to five and enter, everything will change automatically, including the chart and also the label of the chart. Let's start by trying to extract the top three products by sales value. And in order to do this for sure, I'm going to use the filter function. However, I need another function to help me to decide what is the top three products. In this case, it will be the function large. You know that large is pretty much similar to max. However, max can give you only the top value. However, large can help you to define the top value, the second top value, or the third or fourth, or whatever you want. So let's try to write the large function together in this area. I'm going to write equal LAR. The first option is large, so tab, and then let's follow the screen tip. First argument is the array. Array will be the sales value inside the table. If you hover your mouse on top of the column, you'll see this black arrow pointing down. If you click on it, it will select the entire column and you will see in formula bar the name of the table and then between two square brackets you will see the name of the column which is sales value then comma to move to the second argument second argument is k k is your input about you need the first or the second or the third top value in this case we need the third so let me select it from g3 and then close the bracket and enter you will see here the third top value in this table but for our case i need the top three together not the third top in order to do this i'm going to compare the entire column again with this value so inside the formula bar on the left hand side before the large function i'm going again to select the same column and then i'm going to use greater than in order to do the comparison and then enter you will see a list of trues and false and any value greater than the third top will be true same as this one the gloves and if you scroll down you'll see also the pumps but in order to be precise about my ask, I need to put greater than or equal. So let me put equal after the greater than and enter. You will see a third value. So you'll have the gloves and also you'll have the locks and also you have the pumps. Here is your three values. Because you have a list of trues and false, you can take the entire formula here and use it inside a filter function. So let me select from the formula bar Control X to cut and then backspace and enter. In my new table, I'm going to write the filter function equal FIL and then tab and then follow the screen tip. First thing will be the array. In this case, the array will be the entire table. If I hover my mouse over the left top corner of the table, you will see this black tilted arrow. If you click, it will select the entire table and you'll see it's written here, sales by product. Here is my first argument. Second argument should be your criteria. The criteria will be the list of trues and false from the large function. Control V to paste and then close the bracket for filter and enter and here you go the top three products by sales value from this table you can notice it is not sorted i want to sort by sales value no problem i can go again in the formula bar 
on the most left after the equal I can just write sort so sort is your first option tab array is your filter function one arrow to the right and then the sort index sort index meaning that which column you are going to use to sort in this case we have two columns I need a second column let me write two then comma for the next argument the next argument is the sort order it should be descending let me write minus one for descending and then close the sort function and enter your list is also sorted from the largest to smallest and now we can start to draw our chart while selecting any cell inside my data range i'm going to use the keyboard shortcut alt f1 automatically the default chart will be drawn which is the column chart i need to get rid of the grid lines select and delete and also the labels on the vertical axis delete and i'm going to add labels on top of the columns from the green plus i'm going to select data labels and now let's try to change our input from three to five I'm going to type 5 and enter you will see that the table is expanded however no change happened to the chart and if I'm going to select the columns inside the chart you will see that it is pointing only to the first three rows again if I try to reduce the number of rows to two and enter you will see that I'll have an empty area or empty column on the right of the chart in order to explain how we are going to overcome this issue let's try something together i need to reference the entire table in order to do so i need to use the hash pound we have the first video of this series discussing the hash pound you will see the link on top of the screen now so you can start from the beginning with the hash pound now let's try our trick i'm going to press equal here in this empty area and then i'm going to select the first cell on the top corner of this data range and in f7 here the life formula lives the filter formula lives in this cell and then i'm going to type the hash pound once i did this you will see it will select the entire table and then i'm going to press enter whenever i change my input value here let's say to three and then enter the original table will expand and also the reference to the original table also, also expanded here so the hash pound will assist me to point to the entire array so if i can use it inside the chart it will help me to have a dynamic chart as well however unfortunately you'll not be able to use the hash pound inside the chart directly but we have a workaround the workaround is using the names so i can define a name referring to the f7 hash pound but before doing this remember that i need two arrays inside the chart i need one array for the labels which is the product names and one array for the sales value i need at the beginning to split this table into two separate columns because i want to refer to f7 and return only one column and then refer to g7 and return another column to be used in the values inside the original formula i'm going to use the index function so inside the formula bar on the left hand side i'm going to write index i n d e and then tab the index function written let's follow the screen tip first thing will be the array the array is the entire sort and filter function all together and then one arrow to the right and then comma to start the second argument second argument the number of rows i need all the rows so i'm going to omit this one i'm going to type another comma and then number of columns in this case i need the first column so i'm going to type one close the bracket and enter here you go you have only the first column i need also to present the second column let me take a copy of this formula from inside the formula bar Control c and under the sales value double click and Control v and from the formula bar let me change one to two in order to retrieve the second column so i can create now two named ranges one for the product names and one for the sales value in order to do so let's go directly to the formula ribbon and from define names area i'm going to select define name let me give name to the first one i'm going to start with the product names so let's call it product name no spaces allowed and from the new name box let me select this arrow and then select f7 and then i'm going to type hash after the f7 the arrow again and then okay let me do the same for the second array define name this time i'm going to call it value 
select the arrow and then G7 and then hash again the arrow and then OK now let's try to use the newly created named ranges inside this chart in order to do so I'm going to select the chart and going to chart design and from data area I'm going to select data the first thing that I want to do is the sales value itself so I'm going to the left hand side and then edit this small dialog box will be opened let me go to the series value and I'm going to delete all the selected reference except the name of the sheet this sheet called top n amounts so I'm going to select everything after the name of the sheet and then backspace to delete in order to check what I have in the named range I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut F3 you will see the two named ranges here let me select the value 1 and then click on OK and click on OK and let's change the labels from the right hand side edit I'm going to do exactly the same delete everything except the name of the sheet and for sure the explanation mark I need to leave this explanation mark and again I'm going to press F3 this time product name and then OK another OK and the final OK let's see what will happen now let me change my selection to 5 and enter and here you go you will see that your chart is expanding let me put only two it's shrinking and working perfectly with the table let me get rid of this no need for them now and let me correctly position the chart let me put here 10 this is perfect the final step here is to make the label for this chart dynamic let me write the label here top n so in this case it would be 10 so I'm going to write top 10 and then products by sales value and enter I want to reference this inside the title so let me select the chart title and going to the formula bar itself I need to put my cursor inside the formula bar and then type equal and then select G4 and then enter you will see whatever written inside G4 will become directly to the title of the chart in order to make this dynamic I can convert this to a formula let's try to write this formula together so at the beginning I'm going to type equal before the text so equal and then I'm going to put some text so I need to use the double quote before the text then the top the, the word top will be written anyway I'm going to leave top and after the space of, after the word top I'm going to close the double quote then I'm going to join this with something in this case the 10 is correct but this can be changed with the selection inside cell G3 so I'm going to select G3 then another join using and now no need for the 10 the hard coded 10 delete and then I can put another double quote for the rest of the text and then double quote at the end and then enter now this is a dynamic text if I change this to 5 it will write top 5 products and also the title of the chart will be dynamic as I put my input here that was all for today thank you very much for your time before leaving you if you didn't subscribe yet to the channel please do like the video if you like it and leave me a comment and see you in next videos and bye